So you've bought yourself some daffodils, but you're fed up with just doing that cut and plonk and letting them sit in any old vase. Now, if you love all things flower arranging with a little bit of craft and charity shop shopping thrown in, you're in the right place. And I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. All you need to do is to hit the red button mark subscribe. And that means next time you open the YouTube app on your phone, your laptop or your computer, one of my videos will be waiting for you. So what are we going to do with these daffodils? First of all, is to cut your ends with a pair of scissors. I'm just going to go all the way across, take off the elastic band and put them in your vase. Now the problem here is I've got this pretty jug. It's quite small and the opening isn't particularly big, but it really, to get my daffodils to stand upright, the opening needs to be really, really small. That means I should get another vase if I want to have a more intentional look for my flowers. Or if you've got the budget, add more flowers. And I've spent five pounds on five bunches of flowers at the supermarket. And you can see already how much better that looks. My top tip for buying daffodils is to buy them when they're still pencil thin with perhaps just a little bit of colour showing. And you'll find that when you buy your daffodils, they are always sold dry. And basically that means they haven't been put in water and you'll probably find them stacked up in a box. But with a little bit of time and a little bit of water, they'll soon open out and then you'll get to enjoy them from tight bud to part bloom and then full bloom. And hopefully you should get five to seven days of enjoyment out of them. There is, however, another way of making your vase of daffodils look really full without having to spend lots of money. And that's to use sticky tape to create a grid across your vase so it holds all your flowers in place. You'll need to make sure that the rim of your container is dry in order that your tape sticks. And then you make a grid crisscrossing your tape, a bit as if you were going to be playing noughts and crosses. And depending on the size of the opening of your container, it may well be just like a noughts and crosses grid. Two lines this way and two lines that way. see? And if you had a round container without a spout, you could even get an extra row of tape this way. And then all you do is place your flower stems into the holes and that way it stops them all falling off to one side of your vase. I like to work my way around the edge of the container first and then do a second row heading towards the middle. And I don't worry about the placement of the stems that are already open because in a few days, they'll all be in full bloom. So you can see that you don't need so many flowers to get them all to stand up and to create that wow impact, that luxurious look of having plentiful flowers at home. And then the more stems you add in, it's not so much you're using the grid to support your flowers, but the other flower stems are helping to support them. And I'm even managing to get some to go in upright. So I've managed to create a really full effect and I've still got a bunch of flowers left. Now, if you want to up your flower arranging game, there's one thing to look at. And can you see that because all my flower stems are the same length, 
the colour is just like an arc of gold across my top of my vase. And when you look at the vase, you end up with these green stems showing here. But we can easily overcome that and draw the colour from the top of the vase out to the outer edge of the blooms by cutting some of the flowers slightly shorter. And you do this by measuring up and hold the flower where you want it to be and then cut off the excess length. What do you think by cutting that flower shorter there? It just covers up that extent of vertical stems here and just makes the arrangement more pleasing to the eye. But it's a great trick to do if you want to elevate the look of your flowers. One other thing you could do, especially if you want to practice with your foam free mechanics and you've been to the charity shop collecting glass flower blocks, you could pop one of these into the bottom of your vase. And if you're interested in finding out more about these glass flower blocks, I'll leave a link in the description to a video which I think you might be interested in. These glass flower blocks have got little holes in them, so you can aim to put your first few stems in the holes. And then once you've got your first stems in there, you can add in your other stems without actually putting them in the holes. So you put the flower block inside, being careful not to smash it, and then take your first few stems, looking down into the vase and placing them in. And that means that your first stems are standing upright. And if you remember when I showed you my initial cut and plonk, all the flowers just flopped to one side. My flower frog has got seven holes in it. So I've got my first seven daffodils in place. And I think actually I had eight stems in each of my bunches. So if you just bought a single bunch of flowers and you had a small flower frog like me, you could get a beautiful arrangement of flowers which were holding up in place rather than slopping to one side of your vase. And then when you've got your anchor stems in place, you can go around and add in your other flower stems. And again, I'm just placing them in randomly. So I'm mixing up the blooms that are fully open, part open, and those that are still reasonably tight in bud. And they'll start to hold each other up. And then don't forget to add in your shorter stem so its head is resting on the neck of your container. And that will give you some color from the rim of your vase right the way through to your outer buds. And if you've been looking out for these metal pin holders, arranging a bunch of daffodils is a really good way to start practicing using them. And you do exactly the same thing as I did with my pin holder, lower it into your container, and then you do the same thing you did with your glass flower block. And rather than putting the flower stems into the holes, I'm trying to impale them onto those pins. And once I get the first few stems locked in, I can then start to add my flowers in a more free form arrangement. But see how they stand upright? And again, this is another great way of arranging a single bunch of daffodils so that they stay upright and in place rather than flopping off to one side. And if you want to finesse your flower arranging skills a little bit more, you could take an odd number of flowers. Should we go for five and arrange them in a line going up your vase for a really classic look? So with my flower frog in my container, I'm going to choose myself an odd number of flowers. So I'm going to go for five flowers and I want to grade the flowers according to size. So this one is nice and open and this one is in tight bud. So that's going to be number one. And then we've got number five here. And then try and find a mix of flowers according to the size in between. You don't need to spend too much time fretting over this. But you just want to make sure that your longest flower is going to be the bud and the fullest, more open flower is going to be cut low and tucked into the bottom of your vase. Aha, look at that one. Just unfurling. So what I would do is 
place my bud flower right at the back of my flower frog. And I want it to stand up straight. It's looking as if it wants to bend to one side. So I'm just going to readjust it slightly and then measure up with flower number two. And I do that by moving my vase to the edge of the worktop so my stem can fall down here without getting um, bent. Measure up. I want a little bit of gap between my flowers. Cut the stem and working in a line coming towards me but slightly zigzagging through, place that just below the first flower. So it takes a little bit of concentration but that's the beauty of flower arranging, getting lost in the moment. A very mindful activity. I think I need to be a little bit shorter on that one. And this kind of arrangement would look lovely in a small container rather than a jug. Perhaps a little a dessert dish, a little glass dessert dish would be really great. So you can always cut a little bit more off your stems. You can't add in anything if you cut too short, which is why I'm being a little bit careful with my cuts to begin with, because I don't want to have to discard any of my flowers because I've been a bit too hasty with where I've been cutting them. Can you see how I've created a classic line arrangement with my most open and my largest flower at the bottom, and then this line of flowers just zigzagging up to the top of the vase with the tightest bud being the smallest flower. One of the key things about flower arranging, whatever flowers you arrange, always make sure the buds are towards the outer edge and your larger flowers are tucked down at the bottom. So it just goes to show you don't need to spend lots of money on flowers. For a one pound, you could create a super stylish arrangement like this. And of course, you don't need to arrange daffodil flowers on their own. If you're picking from your garden, why not include a little bit of the foliage to fill out the vase a little bit, or even some stems of pussy willow. That would look fabulous. As I've got some blue hyacinths to hand, I thought I would mix the blue and the yellow together, picking up on the blue stripe of my container. So as my pin holder is already inside this vase, I'm going to convert my line arrangement into a more informal arrangement with all my stems appearing to radiate out from the center of my container. So the first few stems will go into the pin holder. And once I haven't got any more prongs left, I will arrange my flowers just so they sit between the other stems. Not everything needs to be wedged into your glass flower block or your pin holder if you decide to use them. These hyacinths smell absolutely glorious. Now you must let me know in the comments whether you like mixing other flowers in with your daffodils. The old wives tale is that the milky sap that leaks out of your stems can sour the water and shorten the life of any other flowers. I must say, for me enjoying flowers at home, I've never particularly noticed that being a problem. But if you are ever concerned, the thing to do is to cut your daffodils to length, first of all, let them sit in water, and then arrange your flowers in another vase without recutting the stems of your daffodils. And with all the flower arrangements, the more you add, the better it looks. So this is a very traditional way of arranging flowers in a jug. Is there a way of arranging your daffodils in a much more striking, modern fashion? Well, let's have a go. What I'm going to do here is to wrap my stems up again using the elastic bands they came with. And then I've got a straight sided vase. This one's actually plastic. Glass would look fantastic. And I'm going to cut my stems until they were part way up the vase. I might need two elastic bands for this. 
to hold everything together. And then repeat. Get those the same length. Next thing I'm going to do is to press a skewer through the stems and see if I can get those bunches to stand upright in the vase. So if I measure very carefully where well, I need to cut. those stems will stand upright. So what I've done is taken two long stems, my bud flowers, keeping the buds at the top, and fed them through the little tied bundles and using the same principles with my traditional flower arrangement at the more open blooms at the bottom. What I need to do now is add a little bit of water and this will create a really dramatic looking arrangement. Let me know in the comments whether that's a step too far for you or whether you like the modern look. Well, that's all for me for now. Let me know in the comments what your favourite arrangement was and what mechanics you're planning to use next time you arrange a simple bunch of daffodils.